Hey, Mill Creek Kids team here. We've been so excited to serve you the past two years. Today is our last online content. And as we're sad because we've enjoyed um, getting to know you through this camera, we're ready to be, see you back in person. So we're inviting you to Easter. Easter service, it's next week. We have three services on Easter, on Easter morning. We have an 8 a.m., a 9.30, and an 11. So at 8 a.m., we only have our nursery offering, but at 9.30 and 11, we have complete and fun content including Duck and Donkey are going to be here live at Mill Creek Forsberg Church. So we'd love to invite you to church. Come see us. And thank you for the last two years. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
So for the last few weeks, we've been learning about the last week of Jesus's life. And now we're finally to Friday. So go ahead and watch this video and then we'll come back and talk about it. Stories of the Bible. Jesus's sacrifice. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Wahoo! The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seemed okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah! 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 Huh, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. We've made it to the end of the week. It always kind of surprised me how we always think of this as Good Friday. Why is the day that Jesus hung on the cross the Good Friday? Well, it's because we know what's coming, right? And so we've made it to the end of the week. It's in a sad place. Jesus has been, he's died on the cross. He has been put in the tomb. All the disciples have scattered. They are, some are together in a room, some are here. Um, we don't even know where Judas is at this point. But what we do know is that it's Friday, but Sunday is coming. And that is what we can, as Christians and as believers in Jesus, that's what we can celebrate. So next week, we're gonna be talking about 
um, Easter and when Jesus rose again. So even though today's story might have been a little sad because we got to see what happened to Jesus, who all he ever did when he was here was love people and serve people and take care of people and how people just denied him and put him on a cross. But it was all for a purpose and that purpose was us. That was me, that was you. Jesus came for a reason and the reason he came was you. So next week, this is our last time with Mill Creek Kids Online, but next week in Sunday School, we're gonna be learning about what Easter is and why we celebrate Easter. Because Easter is the day that Jesus um, rose from the grave, fulfilled every prophecy that God had ever done, did everything that the Father wanted him to do for us so that we can live with him forever. That he is our savior. Everything he did was for us. I want you to know how much Jesus loves you. Jesus loves each and every one of you. He came for you. He knew you. He knitted you together when you were in your mommy's tummy. And so it, we just want you to, I just want you to know, I want to leave you with this at our last time together on Milk Creek Kids Online is this, for you to know just how special you are and how much God loves you. So join us next week at Easter Sunday. Come see us. We'd love to see you so we can celebrate that Jesus is alive. Welcome to Craft Corner, Good Friday edition. Yes. Right? We just learned about Good Friday. Mm -hmm. We thought, what is the iconic, we need to make a cross. Yes. So we came up with a really fun idea mm -hmm. that you just need a few um, popsicle sticks and you want the craft sticks, whatever you want to call them, or you tongue could depressors. use tongue depressors. You yeah. could even use some cardboard and cut your mm -hmm. own. Yes. And you're gonna make a frame, a rectangle frame like this. And the next thing we need are just some different yarn you have around, or maybe ribbon, or whatever you have around your house. Yeah. And we're going to make a cross and use this as our frame. It's yes. Of, I mean, kind of a weaving kind of thing. Yeah. So we're gonna take it and you just begin. What I found is to take a piece of tape, take a glue dot or something to hold that first bit of yarn in place. Because otherwise it comes loose. But if you just hold it, and then, it, oops, like I said, yeah, you want to put it on there. See how you, and then get it on there good. And then what you can do is you just begin to wrap, 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 just I like got this. I serious yarn issue here, yes, but I'm just going to keep working it. Yeah, just and just it. wrap it, wrap it, wrap it to however much, you, however wide you want your cross to be. Yeah. Right? Just keep doing it. Oops. Start over. <laughs> Start over a different yarn. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. And then when you get it to a point, Oh, we like yes. the width there of it. it you can cut off the yarn and tie it at the bottom to make sure that, you know, it won't come loose and unravel. Now, this is one thing. Do not pull too hard when you're wrapping it because no. otherwise you'll end up with your cross kind of horrible, like mine is a little bit. So now you got the, this part of the cross and now you're gonna go across. And again, I know for me, it just really helps to have that first piece just a little bit in place so that I can get it right. Makes sense. Yeah, and then just wrap again. Oh wrap again. and wrap and wrap. And... Wrap again, wrap again, wrap again, wrap again. Did you just tie it off onto itself? I did, I tied it off yeah, onto yeah. itself. You could also tape it or whatever you wanna do. Yeah, and then when you get your what, they, what part of the cross is that? The cross section? What is that? The cross the bar? The beam? Cross. When you get that on, again, you've cut it off. Actually, and make it a little longer because what I found was it's really cool then to take it and kind of weave it around here and it adds a little bit definition to your cross. You could use a different color too. You could. You could use a different color. I'm choosing to use the same blue. But you could. You could choose your favorite is color. Is that blue or black? It's actually a really dark blue. Is it dark? I think maybe. it's maybe. I don't know. Measurement. And after you get your cross done, there it is. Looks pretty cool. You could put it in your window and have the light come through. And then the final touch is to write a memory verse on there. One that maybe you've learned in the last couple of years doing Milk Creek Kids Online. I'm going to write John 3:16 on mine. So for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him Will not perish. Will not perish, but, but have, have eternal life. life. Yes, for God, yeah. That's it. That's the one. That's right. a good one. And when you get it all done, this is what it's gonna look like. 
there it is. That's so, cool. so I've got my cross. It reminds me of what Jesus did for us. Mm -hmm. And as we always said, it's Friday, but Sunday is coming. And so this, so next week is Easter. And we'd love to invite you on to come and see us in person. We have children's programs at 9.30 and at 11 a.m. We'd love to see you there. And we have loved doing Craft Corner with you for the last two years. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. So what do you guys, do we all say goodbye all at once? Yes. Yeah. Goodbye, goodbye, my friends. Come see us. <laughs> come visit.